So now that we've talked about why we give informative speeches, let's talk about some tips that I have for you for giving an informative speech. So first and foremost, you want to make sure that you adjust the complexity of your speech to the audience. So for example, you don't want it to be too complex, but you also don't want it to be too simplistic. And this is also where we're going to talk about avoiding unnecessary jargon. So jargon is any language that is specific to a topic area and it's in it's language that is really only understood by people who are in the know, so to speak. And so if you are a part of that topic area, if you're a part of that field, you will understand what's going on when you're using this language. But if you're outside of the field, like most of your audience will be, they are not going to understand this jargon. So, for example, um, my mother is a dental hygienist, and so because of that, I know a lot of the dental hygiene uh, or the dental jargon that I shouldn't really know otherwise, so I'm kind of like a quasi-insider. Um, so, for example, when a dental hygienist and a dentist are communicating about the health of your teeth, they use numbers, and so each tooth has a number so that they can easily say that there's a cavity on number five and both people involved know exactly which tooth it is that you're talking about. Whereas someone who is outside of that situation is gonna be like, number five, what does that mean? And so you have to make sure that if you are using jargon in your speeches, that you're adjusting it appropriately for your audience so that you are explaining what it is that you're talking about, kind of like defining our terms. And so we wanna make sure that our speech is not too complex for the audience, that we're not using too much jargon, but in, at, on the flip side, we want to make sure that our speech is complex enough for our audience. And so we want to pick a topic that's not going to be too difficult for them to understand, but that isn't going to bore them for six to eight minutes. So for example, if you're giving a speech to a group of college students who are all at least age 18, you probably don't need to give a speech about how to do your laundry because probably most people in that room already know how to do that and it would probably be difficult to get a six to eight minute speech out of that anyway. Um, but you might be able to give a speech about how to change a tire and you would talk about how you like loosen the nuts a little bit before you jack the car up and then you take the nuts all the way off, take the wheel off, etc. right? Um, and so you would have to figure out a way to describe that to the audience, making it interesting but not making it too complicated. In addition to all of this, you want to make sure that you are creating the most concrete images that you possibly can when you're giving your speech. So we want to avoid what we call abstract language, because the more concrete our images and our language is, the better our audience is going to be able to understand and the more clear the message is going to be overall. So for example, let's say that I was giving a speech about entertainment. And I started talking about entertainment. And there's lots of things that kind of fall under this umbrella of entertainment. So I could be talking about movies. I could be talking about television. I could be talking about music, podcasts, uh, concerts, festivals. There's a number of different things that I could be talking about when talking about entertainment. And so my audience might get 25 different messages by my using that language. But if instead I say the word Moana, talking about the Disney movie, now my audience knows exactly what it is I'm talking about. Whereas if I said entertainment, probably no one thought of Moana um, because that's such a broad and um, abstract concept, whereas Moana is very concrete. And so you want to use the most concrete language that you can to kind of guard against that potential misunderstanding. In addition, you want to make sure that you're keeping your information limited. So when you're developing your speech, you want to make sure that you narrow your topic, and we'll talk about this in a couple of weeks' time, but you want to make sure that you keep your information as limited as you can, yet still complete and coherent, easy to understand. And you want to make sure that you stop yourself from going off on tangents as much as possible. And if you do go off on tangents, always remember to bring it back to the actual topic that you are talking about that day. Um, 
So you want to keep your information limited. In addition, one of the most helpful things that you can do for your audience when you are giving an informative speech is to link the knowledge that they already have with the knowledge that you are trying to convey to them. So when I earlier talked about the flu patch and I talked about how it was similar to a Band-Aid that you stick on your arm, that is me connecting the knowledge that you already have in your head about what a Band-Aid is to this new idea of the flu patch. And so you can use the information that you believe your audience already has, and we'll talk about how to find out what that information is when we talk about audience, but you can take that information that you already know your audience has and connect it to the new thoughts, drawing analogies almost between the old and the new so that your audience can more easily understand what it is that you're talking about. You also wanna make sure that you make your speech as memorable as possible, that you make it relevant and useful to your audience, and that you personalize your content. And these three things kind of go together because in making your speech memorable, oftentimes you are personalizing your content, which then makes it relevant and useful to the audience. So when you're making your speech memorable, you want to take as many opportunities as you can to make your speech as vivid as possible for your audience. So you're gonna be using explanations, comparisons between two things, examples, narratives, poetic language. There's all these sorts of things that you can do to make your speech more memorable, to make it stick out in the minds of your audience so that they remember it when they walk away from the room. You also, however, always want to make sure that you're keeping your speech relevant to your audience because we'll talk about this when we get to audience analysis, but one of the things that your audience is always asking you as a public speaker is why does this matter to me? And your job as a public speaker is to always be answering that why question for your audience. So it's your job to make sure that you say, hey, this is why I think it's important that you listen to this information. This is why it's relevant to you. This is why it's useful to you. And the more you can answer that question for your audience, the more willing they're going to be to listen. And finally, you want to personalize your content for the audience. And by this, I don't mean that you have to tell personal narratives or that you have to connect it to your own personal life or anything like that. What I mean by the word personalize is that you put your story onto a person or you put your topic onto a person. So for example, if you're giving a speech about um, type one diabetes and you're talking about people who live with type one diabetes, you can put out all kinds of statistics telling us how many people live with type one diabetes and that's powerful, but it's even more powerful if you talk about Susan who lives with type one diabetes and who constantly has to make sure that she's not consuming too much sugar and all of that kind of stuff, right? So putting a face to your content, putting a face to your informative speech topic makes your speech more memorable for your audience. And because we are empathetic humans and because we like when we can put a face to the name sort of thing, it also makes it more relevant for our audience because it shows us that this affects real human people and we really like that as audience members. So you wanna make your speech memorable, make it relevant and personalize it as much as you possibly can.